Hey YouTube, I've been watching a lot of Rapikuff's videos recently. He does stick welding with 6013 welding rods. A lot of the time he's showing off a dab-dab technique where he starts and stops the arc as he welds and it makes uh, this rippled pattern. It seems to work really well on thin steel. I often see in the comments people are asking about porosity or they want to see it a cross section and I thought I would just do it myself. So I, I kind of tried to copy Rapikuff's technique. I had some 330 seconds, 6013. This is like Lincoln, um, made in Mexico. I know they make their rods all over the place. And yeah, I'm not quite as good at it as Rapikuff is, but I think for the purposes of testing, it is close enough. And then as a comparison, I got some uh, 7018, 330 seconds, 7018. Also Lincoln, this is the Excalibur, the good stuff. Um, unfortunately, I'm not amazing at welding, but once again, I think for purposes of testing, we'll be okay. I might run that a little hotter. Really tempted to weld the back side of this, but I want to cut and etch it and see what it looks like. Before I did this experiment, I knew that 6013 didn't penetrate very deep and that it's pretty easy to get slag trapped in there. So that was kind of my main question going in was how much porosity would there be uh, when we cut open these welds. And I, in all the cuts I made, there wasn't really any porosity. The profile of the bead is so thin that there's not really uh, any room for pockets of slag to get in there. So on that front, it's really good. I ended up learning a bunch of other things. Um, one of them is that, you can probably see it right now, the starting and stopping the arc on the 6013 makes a lot of spatter. There's looks like the surface of the moon or something covered in little rocks. The 7018 by comparison, very little spatter. It looks like in Rapikuff's videos there isn't nearly as much spatter. It might just be the different rods he's using, the different machine. I know to get this weld I had to fiddle around with the hot start and the arc force a bit to get it to run consistently. So overall this was clearly a much shallower profile, uh, shallower than I expected even, whereas the 7018 punched into the into the fit a little bit. This is definitely good for sheet metal. I think it's a viable technique. Uh, clearly Rapikov shows that it works well, works well for him. Another thing I learned was that the 7018 etches much more easily. It's, it makes a very like defined color difference between the etched uh, weld bead and the base metal. All the 6013 pieces just barely showed up. I outlined that in pen, but for some reason the 6013 just does not etch as easily. At least mine doesn't. Um, using this technique, something I learned that I did not expect was how much harder it would be to weld, oh, excuse me, covering up the light, how much harder it would be to weld inside a inside corner versus an outside corner. Because you're constantly starting and stopping the arc, um, when you're on an inside corner, the arc kind of wants to follow up the walls of the of the weld fit up here. Whereas if you're on the outside, it's kind of a, a clean break, so it, it goes along a little easier. That might reduce the spatter on an outside corner. The outside corner test pieces that I did all were, um, the fit up wasn't good. I just didn't have the machine quite dialed, so I will maybe revisit that later. Overall, I had a lot of fun doing this, and I'll probably do more videos like it. Let me know if you want to see any specific rods compared or anything. I mean, there's a ton on YouTube already about stick welding, but hadn't seen much about this. So, yeah, thanks for watching.